The world, as predicted by futurologists and political scientists, has entered a period of severe turbulence, the result of which may be a complete reformatting of the entire world order. And in these very turbulent times, having the most modern and therefore effective weapons is more relevant than ever. The United States unexpectedly announced that they've already developed a prototype of the sixth generation combat aircraft, precisely developed as they've not started building it yet. And not only have they developed it, but they've also tested it. Just some kind of fantasy. It's hard to overestimate the importance of this development. After all, whoever owns the sky owns the world. Let's see what the developers mean by the concept of the sixth generation combat aircraft. The program for its creation in the USA was called NGAD, Next Generation Air Dominance. You couldn't think of a better name. This program should allow the US to continue to have air dominance as happens now. It's a joint project between the Air Force and US aircraft manufacturers. As Lieutenant General Duke Richardson, head of the US Air Force Acquisition Command said, NGAD is not one of the Air Force programs where I can share many details. So information about the US sixth generation fighter is extremely scarce. But we've managed to collect everything that's known about it at this moment. According to the Chief of Staff of the US Air Force, General Charles C. Brown Jr., this jet, which is to replace the F-22 Raptor, will be a multi-role fighter. In other words, it shouldn't only provide air superiority, which means possessing air-to-air -air weapons, but also hit ground targets. There's information that two types of the sixth-generation fighter are being developed under the NGAD program, one with a long range and payload for the Indo-Pacific region, and the others focused on a relatively short range, that is, for the European region. Now let's talk about the fighter itself, whose prototype has already been tested. As far as it's clear from the available descriptions, a long-range version was created. Judging by the images of the aircraft, it's an enlarged lozenge-shaped glider with a displaced wing. This creates a large compartment inside the fuselage for weapons and fuel tank. Two air intakes are mounted on the outside of the wings. This unusual layout reduces the radar and thermal signature of the aircraft from the ground. The machine will have two engines and two vertical stabilizers. The latter has long been the norm for strike aircraft. And this is all that's known about the appearance of the fighter so far. But there is a video taken at the secret Lockheed Martin Radar Measurement Center in Hellendale. Here we can see the shape of the sixth generation aircraft. It's sharply different from those of modern fighters, but very similar to the drawings of futurologists when they imagine the airplanes of the future. General Electric is developing the XA-100 engine for the future aircraft, which combines three key innovations. Firstly, it works on an adaptive cycle. That is, it provides both a high power mode for maximum output and a high efficiency mode for optimum fuel economy and idle time. Second, extensive use of advanced materials, including ceramic matrix composites and polymer matrix composites. Third, the ability to incrementally change temperature control. These innovations increase engine thrust by 10%, improve fuel efficiency by 25%, and provide greater heat dissipation capability of the aircraft. At the same time, the weight and dimensions of the future engine will be approximately the same as those of its existing counterparts. The XA-100's improved fuel efficiency ensures a significant reduction in carbon emissions. The engine will also run on any U.S. Air Force-approved biofuel. No modernization of an aging propulsion system can simultaneously provide revolutionary improvements in fuel economy, thrust, power, and temperature control and durability like the XA-100 engine, said David Tweedy, GE's General Manager of Advanced Combat Engines. But the fifth-generation F-35 aircraft will be the first to receive such an engine, which, of course, is exciting. General Electric has now conducted the first phase of testing of the already second XA-100 engine. It took place at the company's high-altitude test facility in Evandale, Ohio, and allowed General Electric to continue collecting high-quality performance data, confirming the engine's transformational capabilities. The second phase of testing will begin at the U.S. Air Force's advanced test facilities at the Arnold Engineering Development Complex in the first quarter of 2022. That's all for now on the factual material that currently exists on the sixth generation aircraft in the NGAD project. Based on this information, let's try to understand how this sixth generation aircraft will differ from the famous F-22 Raptor, the first fifth generation aircraft. First, let's recall what the fifth generation means. Aviation experts usually distinguish five generally accepted characteristics. 
These are low visibility, increased maneuverability, new generation avionics systems, multi-purpose capabilities, and networking or data integration capabilities. By the way, based on these criteria, the F-35 Lightning II, the most mass-produced fifth-generation aircraft of today, is not the fifth generation. It lacks enhanced maneuverability. And then what is the plane of the sixth generation? What does it have to be so fundamentally new to start developing it, spending hundreds of billions of dollars? Why can't we produce fifth generation aircraft that have already been developed and already mastered? By the way, the F-22 Raptor was withdrawn from production in 2012 and a total of 187 machines were produced, the plan being 750. The reason for scrapping production was the very high price of the plane, which ended up being almost $412 million at a weight of 19.7 tons, which is even more expensive than the equivalent mass of pure gold. Oddly enough, we don't see as clear a definition of a sixth generation strike aircraft as we did with the fifth generation. Here's what the Eurasian Times news portal writes. The sixth generation aircraft will probably include everything that defines a fifth generation fighter jet, in addition to some additional features. There's an opinion that the next generation aircraft could be unmanned while retaining the ability to retain a manned crew. While this is pure speculation, it may make some sense as air forces around the world work on their loyal wingman concept of pairing a manned aircraft with one or more UAVs. Swarming drones are likely to be featured in sixth generation fighter programs, sophisticated projection displays, HUDs, controlled by artificial intelligence and data fusion to enhance pilot situational awareness and reduce cognitive load during aerial combat or all sixth generation aircraft. In other words, the truly revolutionary innovations that'll distinguish the sixth generation aircraft from its fifth generation counterpart are first the presence of artificial intelligence, which will enable the aircraft to be used in an unmanned version. Second, to fly in conjunction with guided unmanned drones. Of course, we can still talk about a more advanced engine, but it can hardly be considered a revolutionary innovation. What does a 10% increase in thrust and a 25% increase in fuel efficiency do? Only a slight increase in speed and a decrease in operating costs, but not a fundamental increase in combat performance. Most interesting is the use of artificial intelligence, which will help remove the pilot from the aircraft. In this case, the machine's combat performance will increase dramatically. First, it'll be able to perform maneuvers with overloads that humans can't do. The plane will truly be super maneuverable. Secondly, the speed of decision-making will increase. The computer, which calculates everything according to algorithms and performs tens of millions of operations per second, will control the aircraft faster and more accurately. The option of a sixth generation aircraft with a pilot is not quite clear, because in this case, such a machine will not be head to head superior to the fifth generation machines. And this is how the F 22 Raptor surpasses the fourth generation fighters. And then it's not clear at all why they'd spend hundreds of billions of dollars on something else. As for the possibility of controlling a swarm of drones, this concept is already being implemented by the Russians in their fifth generation fighter, Su 57. The Su-70 Hunter unmanned aerial vehicle will enter the Army for it as early as 2024, so it can't be considered a sixth-generation privilege. We're sure that there'll be more information about the NGAD program in the near future, and we'll know whether the pilot or unmanned version will be preferred. As soon as that's known, we'll be sure to make a new video for you. So subscribe to our channel so you don't miss that, as well as many other interesting and informative videos about modern weapons. And if you like this video about the sixth generation American airplane, don't forget to like it. We try very hard for you.